On this video, I'm going to explain why maybe you shouldn't keep contributing as much as possible into a pension. Now, most people assume putting money into a pension is a good idea because your employer will contribute and you'll contribute. Now, don't get me wrong, there are many good reasons to invest in a pension. And in many countries in the world, it is still the best way to invest. Um, however, in some situations, it just isn't the best way to invest. I'll give you an example of the UK, just as one example of many to illustrate why the devil is in the detail. Now, if you're in the UK, and let's keep this simple, let's say you're earning about £30,000 a year, you know, the average salary in the UK or the average medium salary, or let's say you're earning between 28 and 32,000 a year, right? And you contribute 5% to your pension and your employer contributes 3% to your pension, which I think is the current minimum for auto enrollment. Now, based on those figures, if you invest from say age 21 or 22, all the way through to age 68, if you uh, get 8% or 8.2% per year investment returns, you'll have a 1.2 million pound to 1.3 million pound investment pot at the end. Now, what's interesting about that is 8%, it sounds high for some people, but it's a full two or 3% below the S&P 500's average return and the NASDAQ and several other stock markets around the world. So it's fairly conservative, but I've done that because obviously there'll be two or 3% inflation so I want to make these figures more realistic for uh, future inflation. Now the key thing about that is this is above the lifetime allowance. Basically the UK government sets a lifetime allowance. At the moment it's just below 1.1 million pounds. Now the key thing is above that lifetime allowance you are taxed 55% of anything you take out as a lump sum or if you take it as an annuity and now as a monthly income, you're charged 25% plus the normal rates of income tax. So indirectly, it's pretty much the same as 55%. For some people higher, some people lower, but it's in the same range. So what's even more interesting about these figures is the UK government themselves believe that about 50% of the UK's population in an hour 30 or 40 years will have a pension pot big enough to be above the lifetime allowance. And the reason is fairly simple, that basically the lifetime allowance is only going up with inflation, 2 or 3%. And markets usually go up higher than inflation. That was the summary of Thomas Piketty's book, Capital, that basically the reason wealthier people get wealthier is long-term capital goes up more than labor. So over time, this discrepancy will make a huge difference. And in addition to that, as more final salary pensions are being phased out, and it's going towards market-based pensions, so you'll get back what the market has given you. It's not gonna be like uh, previous generations. The number of people who are gonna have one, two, three million uh, in retirement is gonna skyrocket, because instead of being given, say, 40 or 50,000 pounds, or even 30,000 pounds as a salary, more people are going to just have a pot of money that they're going to be able to either buy an annuity, get a salary, or uh, just draw down. It's a changing landscape, right? Whereas previously, most people wanted the security of a final salary pension, uh, and they didn't actually have this huge pot to manage themselves. So that means that according to the UK government's own forecasts, and let's face it, I can't see why they would forecast this if it isn't gonna be true or likely to be true, because it's not exactly an optimistic forecast, is it? According to the UK government's own forecasts, at least 50% of the UK population in a generation or two is going to have to pay that higher level of tax, which is, you know, more than 55%. It's huge. Um, and obviously it's double tax because you've already paid tax for your working life. So what's interesting about that, it implies that for many people, investing uh, just enough for your retirement in a pension, but not enough to go above the lifetime allowance is going to be much cheaper. And using uh, extra money to invest by yourself, maybe in different structures rather than a pension structure. You can still invest in many ways without putting it into a pension. So I'm not saying investing for retirement is a bad thing. It's absolutely key. Everyone has to do it. But in a pension structure, you're likely to pay more tax 
at least in the UK context, unless the rules change. And that leads me to another thing. Most pensions, you can't get them until you're 68 or below. Now, it does depend. Again, the devil is in the detail. They are becoming more flexible. But even with flexible pensions, usually you can't take out any money, uh, you know, ASAP. Um, so the rules could become even more onerous. The tax could become even more onerous. Whereas if you have a more flexible investment pot, an investment plan, you can be a bit more nimble and you're not as um, reliant on the government not changing their, their their rules. I mean, I can remember in the last election in the UK, the so-called WASPy women, they were protesting because they said, oh, the government promised us X and Y and now we're having to retire later. And the interesting thing about pensions, I think it's ripe for a government to come uh, forward in the future and say, now you have to be 72 to get the pension or a company to say, okay, well, for this particular company pension plan, you have to be 71 or whatever before you can take it. It's ripe for that kind of thing because uh, the population is getting older, uh, attitudes to immigration have hardened. Uh, it's an aging population. Uh, the UK government needs revenue because of coronavirus and it needs revenue anyway. <laughs> it needed revenue even before the coronavirus. So those are all huge negatives. So I'm not saying don't invest at all in pensions, but especially if you're a higher earner, but even if you're a medium earner who's just starting early, you could be paying a hell of a lot of tax. Now, that's just a UK example. Different countries will have different examples, but you should seriously consider whether you want to invest all of your spare cash in a pension structure or go into something different. How can I help you in two ways? First of all, are you an expat, a high net wealth individual, or just somebody who lives in a part of the world where it's difficult to get access to quality investment solutions? In which case, go onto my website on adamfire.com and find out more. If you don't fit into any of those categories, then in which case there's a range of free material on my website, on this YouTube channel, and indeed on my Quora, where I get over 200 or have received over 231 million views uh, in the last few years. And finally, if you want to uh, actually read my thoughts in more detail, go onto Amazon and find my book on there.